Hey folks, this is Vince Riley, CFII Fixed Wing and Rotor Wing. You know, I have students, coworkers, friends approach me all the time asking me to help demystify uh, the VOR and how to determine the position using the OBS and the CDI. You know, sometimes during either a check ride or during a written exam. So I'm going to take a few minutes uh, with these illustrations to demystify uh, the whole process of determining where your aircraft is in relation to a VOR. So basically this presentation is for future private pilots that just haven't mastered the instrument skills uh, or seasoned pilots that just need a quick review. Alright, we're going to start by drawing a VOR on our whiteboard here. Then we're going to draw the 360 radial extending from the ground station, the VOR transmission station northward to infinity, basically just for illustration purposes. 360, we've also added the 030 and the 090, we'll draw here. And then here's one thing I want you to remember, when determining aircraft position in relation to a VOR station, just think of the radio that you have selected in the OBS as always beginning at the station and heading outward in the direction of the selection on the OBS. This next illustration is a picture taken directly from the FAA computer testing supplement Supplement, which is available online and at the end of this video I'll give you a link that you can actually go to the website and download this booklet. Um, this depiction shows nine different CDIs which demonstrate various aircraft positions in relation to the VOR transmitter which is located on the ground. We're going to draw our VOR again and again for simplicity's sake we're just going to use the 360 radial. I circled a 360 because that's what we're going to select in our OBS when we're trying to navigate to this radial. Remember the radial begins at the VOR, extends to infinity to the north. Of course the limitation there is uh, radio reception capability. Now I know you're going to call me a liar. I'm going to draw a line south of the VOR just to demonstrate how we determine whether we're left or right of course. And I'm only doing this for illustration purposes. And then I'm going to draw a course deviation needle which indicates that the course is to the right of us which means we've deviated to the left. And again since the needle is deflected to the right it demonstrates that we are left of course assuming that the aircraft is headed 360. So the shaded red area is the area that we cannot be in if the needle is deflected to the right and our OBS is set to 360. So to reiterate this idea, always assume that when you're trying to determine your position in relation to the VOR that you're headed in the direction of what is set in the OBS. In this example, it's 360, so we imagine ourselves heading north, and then we have a deflection to the right, which means the course is to the right, so we are left of course. And now in this example, we need to determine if we're north of the VOR or south of the VOR. So to do that, the easiest way to illustrate it is we draw a perpendicular line to the 360 radial. Anytime we're south of that perpendicular line, we're going to have a two flag, which means we're headed to that radial. And that's why it's important that I asked you that you imagine that the radial always begins at the VOR and extends outward in the direction that you set. So in this example, the CDI demonstrates we have a two flag. Two means we have not yet arrived in that hemisphere, the northern hemisphere, that's associated with 360 radial on that 90 degree line. We haven't arrived at that position yet, so we're still headed to that. This is regardless of the direction the aircraft is headed. Remember, this instrument only tells us our position in relation to the 360 radial. So in this example, we cannot be in the northern section of it. We have to be in this lower left quadrant. All right, now we're going to use that same example. We've got 360 tuned in the OBS. We're showing the deflection of the CDI to the right, which means we're left of course. So we're going to draw the aircraft left of course. Now we're going to notice that we've got a from flag. So we're going to draw our horizontal yellow line to determine which side of the VOR we're on. And then because we've got the from side, we're on the same side as the 360 radial because it radiates from the VOR. And that's how we determine our position in this example. All right, now we're going to, on this one example, we'll continue to use the 360 on the OBS. We've got a from flag being displayed on the CDI, which means we're in that area where the radial extends from the VOR in the direction of 360. In this example, we're flying southwest. And if we continue flying southwest, disregarding the CDI uh, needle swinging back and forth as we cross the VOR, or go south of that yellow line, at some point we're going to enter the area where the two flag will become activated, demonstrating that we need to do something to get back to the area where the 360 radial exists from the VOR extending northbound. 
All right, in this example, we're actually using image number one from the uh, computer testing supplement. We're going to draw our VOR here on the whiteboard. CDI shows that somebody in the OBS has selected 210. That's not our course or our heading. That's the radial we want extending from the VOR. We draw a radial extending from the VOR and in case, of course, our imaginary line just to extend that to determine whether we're right or left of course. The CDI indicates that the course is to the right of us, so assuming we're headed the same direction, we are left of course, so we cannot be in the red area. So we'll draw a little airplane to the left there. And then now, we've got a two flag on the CDI. So we're going to draw our, our perpendicular line to 210. And then now we know that we can't be in the area where the radial extends from the VOR. We're in the area where we would be doing something to get to that radial and where it starts. All right, we're going to use that same example again. We're going to use CDI number one from the computer testing supplement. We're going to draw our VOR. If you look at the CDI, this is the same CDI we worked with in the last scenario. The OBS is set to 210, so more map-like, we're going to draw the line extending in the vicinity of 210 away from the VOR. Then we're going to draw the extension line opposite direction just again to help us determine which side of the VOR course we're on. This is the same CDI which shows the courses to the right of us, so we can't be in the red area as depicted. So the aircraft is left of course. So we don't know if we're to or from yet. We're not working with that. We're going to envision ourselves headed 210 to help determine where we're at. Now, we're going to look at the CDI again and notice that it has the two flag. We're going to have that imaginary line and we're going to draw it here in yellow that depicts the from and the to area. We're on the to area, which means we have to do something to get to where the radial extends from the VOR. We're not on the from side. So that puts us in the upper right quadrant. All right, folks, I hope you were able to learn something from this video. And uh, if you did, please share it with your friends. Two takeaways, important things to remember. When trying to find your location in relation to the VOR station, make sure you always assume that the aircraft, whether you're flying a helicopter or airplane, is headed the same direction as the OBS. In the examples we used, 360 or 210. That'll help you determine whether you're right or left of course heading in that direction. Then determine whether the flag says 2. If it says 2, you're not quite in the area associated with where the radial starts at the VOR and extends out in the direction of the setting. If you're in the from flag area, you are in the area, the 180 degrees representing that area from where the VOR radial extends from the station out to infinity. Again, thanks so much for watching. Share this with your friends and uh, leave comments below. I appreciate your comments.